Hello everybody and it is my great pleasure to bring you the 2021 DDNet Game of the Year Awards. We're going to be announcing one per day over much of this month, celebrating the very best and brightest of the video game industry through the year and it has been an absolutely incredible year indeed. There has almost not been a single week that has gone by without a game that is worth talking about and we have almost 50 games to award across all of our categories this year just showing just how much variety and quality and depth there has been in what developers and publishers have been able to put out through very difficult situations. This year we will be giving away four awards per category, two bronze, one silver and one gold. It should go without saying which is the top award, that being the gold of course, but don't overlook the others. These are all excellent games that you're going to see over the course of these awards and we highly recommend that you try each and every single one of them. So with all of that, sit back, relax and enjoy, and allow us to bring you the very best that 2021 has given us. The first bronze medal in visual design goes to Genesis Noir. Noir is a spectacular aesthetic when it's done well, but far too often Noir these days means violent and ugly. Noir at its best should be classy and stylish, with a high contrast aesthetic that is symbolic of the darkness and seediness sitting underneath in the world and the narrative. Genesis Noir is brilliant because it does get that right, and gets right to the heart of what Noir should look and feel like. The game did draw some criticism for not being gamey enough, which is unfortunate because it never aimed to be gamey in the first place. However, of much greater importance for this particular category is that no one ever could criticise the visual direction of Genesis Noir. It's subtle in a way that it uses colour and high contrast black and whites to carefully draw the eye and focus the player on the relevant information within a scene. The way that the Noir aesthetics have been tuned to a story of the universe's creation and potentially destruction is also truly fascinating to see in motion. Not many noir texts do that, so Genesis Noir also earns points for being able to surprise us in a very long-established genre. The second bronze medal in this category goes to Chris Tales. Chris Tales is a Colombian homage to and celebration of the JRPGs of yesteryear. It is immediately striking to look at, and despite being a reasonably long game, at no stage are you ever going to get sick of looking at it. The central gameplay gimmick is also the most impressive visual feature as well. The screen is split into a number of different parts, each displaying a different time, such as current and the future. In other words, you can see the before and after of key events on the screen, and moving around to see those transitions at play is always a stunning effect that needs to be seen to be believed. The art direction beyond that is gorgeous as well, offering a blend of South American and traditional JRPG aesthetics that result in something you've never quite seen before. The colourful, vibrant world design leaves the impression of the most beautiful kind of pop-up book. The character design is distinctive and memorable, the environments are all a wonderful twist on classic fairy tales and JRPG traditions. The whole thing is quite unique because of its unique background, and that's what makes Chris Tales so special. The silver medal for best visual design goes to Cupid Parasite. You are going to love Cupid Parasite from the second that you load it up. This Otome game is full of energy and verve, and the Art Deco aesthetics that come with it are sublime to look at. With any visual novel, the art itself is a key selling point, of course, and we have seen a lot of great looking visual novels in 2021, but Cupid Parasite is off another level entirely. This game is a treat, a distinctive and unique treat, for the eyes at every step of the way. The character art is exceptional too, of course, with any Otome game, the boys need to be pretty and a varied bunch, and that is certainly the case with Cupid Parasite. But what is interesting about this game is that it is more solely focused on being a work of comedy than most of its Otome peers, 
and that does come through the character designs themselves. There's a silly and self-aware edge to the art of Cupid Parasite is the point here, and that helps it to stand out in a genre where we are starting to see an awful lot of games localised. The gold medal for visual design goes to Blue Reflection Second Light. What can we possibly say about Blue Reflection Second Light's art that we haven't already said yet this year? This game is the ultimate example of what we mean at digitallydownloaded.net when we say we would rather have art direction over raw processing and big budget effects. I mean, who knows what frame rate Blue Reflection runs at? It's perfectly playable and technically proficient because it needs to be. But more than that, though, the game transcends its budgetary limitations compared to a lot of other games out there to be absolutely breathtaking to look at. Mel Kishida's character designs and the airy backgrounds and locations make for something that is ethereal in its beauty, and that is something we so rarely see. Will a lot of people chalk this game up as fan service? Probably. And it does have an element of that, of course, you can't deny that. But more importantly, this is like a painting in motion, and it is a unique aesthetic that you're seeing in this game because it is a unique artistic talent that made it. Blue Reflection Second Light would have been an excellent game if it wasn't so beautiful. It is a very good game, plays nicely, but at the same time, it would not have been so emotionally engaging and uplifting if it wasn't so absolutely beautiful to look at.